Today in Boggy Bottom, we are going to be building for a very, very interesting animal. Today, we're going to be building for the Babarusa. This is, I think, our second time actually building for these guys on the channel. And these guys were some of my favorites when they first initially got revealed. In case if you guys don't know, Babarusas are part of, like, you know, the big old pig family and they're really freaking cool once you start to learn about them but before we do that welcome everyone my name is leaf and it's so great to have you guys here in boggy bottom if this is your first time here what the hell are you doing in the middle of the show come on go start from the beginning like all the rest of the folks either way i'm just happy to have you guys here nonetheless but anyways today we are building for the babarusa and they have a lovely riverbed uh kind of setup so that's exactly what we're building today and we're still using that same riverbed kind of blueprint that I made a while ago back during the start of the whole series and we're really having that kind of carry itself throughout the entire zoo so I really do like recurring themes when it comes to all that stuff so that's exactly what we do with that and we also try and find our way with the foliage around here so that's exactly why I want to have right in the backdrop of this habitat I want to make sure we continue that go ghost gum grove uh, all the way out through here we're kind of having it taper off towards the babarusas so that's something that we got to keep in mind when we do do our like you know final decorations for the entire zoo so that's all going to be happening over there but for the time being we just let it be around there. What I'm also doing over here is making sure that our Babarusa are not able to escape. And since these guys don't really kind of live on the rocks as like, you know, goats and caprids do, they're not really that well versed at traversing rocky terrain. So that's kind of our precautionary measures that we take when we want to have their habitat be viewed from the other side of the uh, guest perspective. So that's what we incorporate over there what we kind of do is do a little bit of a dry moat which is something that i've been loving to do in this zoo recently it's just a really awesome way to give a lot more different perspectives at your habitats for your guests so essentially i really like the idea of um how do you put it not really having barriers not really having like these big obstructions in the way and that's exactly where i feel like this zoo really shines and this habitat in particular has this beautiful view that we're working on right over here you can see me start to lay down the groundwork for it um where you could just look right into the habitat and it looks so natural and it looks so beautiful uh, so that's essentially what we work on for the most of that part and we also have this be very rocky so we're making good use out of these new uh for rock pieces i say new they've been out for over a year which is kind of crazy to think about i always remember like the aquatic was the new pack but no, ever since then, we've gotten so many awesome packs that Aquatic kind of pales in comparison. I don't know what you guys think, but the European pack blows Aquatic out of the ground alone. And that's like such a lower tier pack. Um, I don't know, it's just very interesting to think about. But essentially what we're doing, we're kind of having this feel like it's a little bit overgrown by incorporating a lot more periwinkle grass. And we also use the hydrilla grass as well as a way to keep it feeling a little bit more lush and very much in line with the rest of the zoo. Uh, in case of you guys aren't aware, I'm using the hydrilla grass as a way to kind of make this darker kind of grass kind of look. And it feels so nice, so weedy, so tropical that it really has this beautiful effect on the rest of the zoo it looks incredible when all is said and done so we have all that playing on throughout here and i was feeling that something was missing from this habitat so i add the logs over here uh just as a way to really help it feel like a lot better i don't really know i really like it uh we should probably also talk about babarusas they're some of my favorite animals as i did say before the males have these wicked cool tusks and they can have up to four or maybe even six if i'm not sorely mistaken but they could actually grow in on themselves and actually start to penetrate skin and skull which is honestly wicked crazy to think about but most of the time when they're kept in zoos they don't really have that happen uh it mostly happens out in the wild when the keepers aren't really able to protect them or really prevent against stuff like that they kind of grow at their own rate which is very interesting to see but for the purposes of this are really cool also 
they're kind of like wicked awesome looking. They kind of look like rocks, like moving rocks. Whenever we go to Roger Williams, I always look in their habitat and I always mistake them for just general rocks in their habitat because they have this beautiful dark grayish kind of color to them. They're just such interesting creatures. I'm so lucky to have them at my local zoo because they're just really freaking awesome when all is said and done. And also, making sure that we continue these themes throughout our zoo. I do include some of these fences that we made back in the platypus habitat. Again, I just did that for the proboscis monkey episode. But I'm also doing it once again for this one over here. And what I also do, I kind of make a kind of open concept uh, viewing gallery for these guys. So we have that be very much stone. Um, and feeling kind of like a temple, kind of. I don't really know how to describe it, but it feels very nice in the end. What I also do, I kind of make these stones feel a little bit more concrete by decorating them and decorating the edges of them, which I think comes off really well in the end. Uh, it feels a lot more formal and they feel a lot more solid. Uh, I just really do like it. They, The colors of gray that work together for this viewing area, it works really well. And I do change out the color of the path, for the elevated natural path and I just love the texture on that so much more it just feels so much more clean uh, so we kind of go throughout this all and we add some smaller ones as well and we kind of make our way with uh, kind of doing that all right there I don't really know what else there is to say about that it just helps to line up this habitat really well and again this is something I struggle with recently in this area alone uh, when you have too many climbable pieces all together, the lag in the game becomes unbearable in some parts. Like, you can see me really struggle right there. Um, and just duplicating and moving pieces around becomes such a hassle that you really need to make sure that you get stuff right. Otherwise, you gotta upgrade your computer. And I just did that, and I really don't want to spend the money on another one. But essentially, we kind of make our way through that, and we kind of do, like, you know, pull our big boy pants up and make our way through that. All in the end, it looks pretty good, and I do cover up that area back there a little bit more. Once we actually do get there, you can see it's frozen right there, so I kind of just give up. But here we go into the B-roll and the cinematics, and I do want to stop and thank you guys for stopping by, even for such a short episode. I know this one really isn't as long as it usually is, but I really thank you guys for stopping by nonetheless, because this one is such a beautiful habitat that I hope you guys were able to pick something up and take something away from this one. So all said and done, thank you guys so much for watching. You guys are always the best, and I can't wait to see you guys in the next episode. Take care and have the most wonderful of wonderful days. Bye-bye now.